I think like a broader concept that ties in is like people just put themselves like the best thing that people are, are, are good at is, uh, building their own prisons. You're listening to the real you thoughts, ideas, and perspectives from the ordinary and all of us. My name is Dooley, and this podcast is in partnership with Pocket Change, the social platform built to show the real you. If I won the lottery right now, like whatever, $50 million or some enough to be separate life and then have just explorative art set. What I, the first thing that comes to my mind and has been on my mind is, so to go on tour, right? But not to go on tour with, to go play venues, but you create a venue, which is for about a hundred people. And it's this, you basically can construct it and it doesn't have to be that big, even 50 people, whatever. Enough to be like, feel like you're in a kind of crowd energy. Um, And it's this dome, right? And it, (laughs) so you can go with a couple trucks and it's this dome that becomes a fully, like you go in, you lock your phones up before you enter into this dome. The performance DJ thing is kind of like hanging, right? From above, but it's also moving in the dome the floorboards themselves are subtly shifting at all times. So not like noticeably. And then obviously the whole dome is this light laser situation. Whoa. And then you actually bring in on top, like, you know, how speakers sometimes provide like the feeling of like wind in a way, mm-hmm. like, you have, like almost little like wind guns and you can dribble water from the top or have like heat textures start to come in and it becomes a literally Whoa. full like enter into another world for an hour two hours whatever it is and that's and you could actually do multiple performers um mm-hmm. a custom light set up and choosing of um if you want to do like rain or wind and stuff like that yeah um, that is 100 percent. if i won the lottery the first thing that comes to my mind <laughs> is that's so cool all that. but um and it, the weird thing is it's kind of possible not that it would be that i think it is profitable yeah but it's under a certain amount of money to like build that kind of stage. You can get all the same speakers and everything. It's just layering it into the design of the stage and then, or of the. Yeah. I I was talking to um, somebody that uh, I met through that group. I joined in uh, Denver archipelago. Um, And he, he, I forget like what the name of the organization is, but they're like one of the biggest, um, like pe- they're like a staple at Burning Man every every time, and like yeah, yeah, yeah. they basically set up these domes. Um, and they're I think their specialty is sort of like fire. Um, that's like their thing. Like they have like fire shooting up from the stages and fire coming off the top of the domes, and like just huge, huge amounts of fire. Yeah. Um, and they they'll come into a city and construct these domes like these fire venue domes and have yeah. sick artists play there and take it all down like burning man style yeah, yeah. Um, that could almost be like a cool way to operate your yeah. thing is if you could make it like modular enough and like make it something that you could like come into like denver or come into vegas or miami or wherever and like set it up and like yeah. do a show and take it down like that would add like a whole nother element of like I was going to say the thing is, is going into it with the tour mentality is you don't do, you don't just tour, do one night and then go on to the next. It's like, it's a very limited capacity show. So it becomes this thing where you actually kind of like pull up almost like food truck style where you just hang yeah. out in the city for a bit. And you yeah. For like a few months. Like, yeah. Like, and it's just the same thing. Have you been to the um, immersive Van Gogh thing? uh no i did go to meow wolf <laughs> oh, okay yeah that's kind of a kind of a i got lost in there pretty quickly but um <laughs> yeah, <me too. laughs> what did you think of meow wolf i was i thought it was like very obviously cool and what it was like it was um, yeah yeah that's almost like all i have to say is i was like i i i wholeheartedly agree with the sentiment <laughs> you're putting off yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm, whatever. Yeah. What's going on with your guys' vision of this? Like, yeah, good, it, good, good did, on you. <laughs> you did it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, so with the immersive Van Gogh, though, they also set up basically in a building, these big LED walls, and then you have some 
it's cool and everything. It had the music with it. Um, but I'm basically with the vibe of, and what they're doing is they just set up in cities and they do multiple month runs of it. Uh, and then you're out. However, that is again, a little bit, um, underwhelming and what compared to what I'm talking about with like how <laughs> much more of an intense experience I'm sort of looking to, yeah. to provide, but no, all five, all five senses, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. And, and it's, have you ever um, worn a sub pack? I um, haven't worn one. I've heard about them though. Okay. So yeah, it's a little back, like base backpack thing. Mm -hmm. um, the first time you listen to it and honestly, even <laughs> every time I put it on, you kind of get, obviously you get shook as in physically by the base, but you get almost shook at how different it can something that's so familiar can sound or something like Do you have one yeah 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 so i have one yeah oh i need to try it out dude yeah 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 my my buddy actually gary um shout out g-dubs but he uh, just no you met gary yeah he left he like gave it to me he's like oh yeah i can't really you know fit this in my stuff i'll like this would be my oh, gift wow I'm like wow I got to come over and try that. I've, yeah. I've wanted to try one for a while. Yeah, no, they're, they're awesome. But the, the cool part about it is songs that you've been listening to for years in big car with the big sub, like full loud headphones. It's just different. Like it's a different mm -hmm. way of listening to it. Um, and you eventually get used to it as you're there for 20 minutes, kind of dabbling with stuff. But every time you put it on for the first time, you kind of forget that it's just different. Mm -hmm. And so that's also where, um, I think tapping into a full immersive experience can come is it's not even, it's just the lack of even having a central point. Like the fact that there's a like performer or DJ or audio person running the set above and it's kind of like moving. It's like, you're not actually just watching them and the visuals mm -hmm. have no central. And if the thing's moving, you become instantly disoriented by what it is you're being told to focus on and then you go mm -hmm. totally inwards to yourself of like i'm is it where the other people are facing is it how i'm facing and dancing or sitting there absolutely not moving like whatever the vibe of it is um it becomes separate of like being directed into it and like your own way of taking it all in so even those sort of intentional pieces to what a live show can actually be um yeah like almost intentionally like disorienting people yeah <laughs> so that they go inwards no i i like that idea i hope psychedelics are legal by the time you do <laughs> that so you can just like you have to take a gram to come in <laughs> a little shroom booth on the outside that you <laughs> yeah yeah that's funny um but yeah so i don't know that's where but it also so, there you go Let's sorry it uh well, I, I wanted to get back to the, um, what we were talking about a little bit earlier of the just sort of vision for like, what are you optimizing for oh, yeah. um, in terms of just like, what do you want? Yeah. Like, where do you want your life to go just with like creating things and like, how are you, you know, paying for your life and that side of things? Um I think some, something I just wanted to say on that was I've been coming to terms with the fact that my life and interests are just much more cyclical than I would have liked to admit. Um, and I've just really been like coming, coming to terms with it, but also like growing to enjoy it and not let it like stress me out so much. Um, and like, yeah, I, I, I've just noticed over the past like six months, almost every month has been an entirely like fully engrossing like new thing where I almost put everything else on the sidelines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, no, what, go go deeper on that. What do you mean by like it's become sick, like cyclical or like how does? Yeah, so it's almost like like seasons are too slow. It's almost like uh, cyclical. Like every few months, it's like a totally new, um, just, just a totally new thing for me, like a totally new interest set of interests and priorities. Um, like, yeah, I, I guess example, for example, um, for the, for the month leading up to, uh, you know, kind of Christmas holidays time, I was just working all the time. Um, 
and just like, yeah, basically just writing software and like doing the whole thing. And then like mid December hit and I essentially spent a full month like skiing and touring and snowmobiling all, all the time. Like that's all I did literally. Like if you looked at during that period of time, if you looked at the tabs I had open on my phone, yeah. it was like different bind, like different gear and like how to fix things and like Abbey conditions and snow reports. And just like, that was my whole world for yeah. like literally an entire month. Um, and then I got back from that and, uh, you know, got back from that, decided to move, not even decided I moved into the next cycle. I haven't skied for the past month since that ended since like, you know, sort of the beginning of January, I, it was sort of, maybe it's been three weeks mm. and I transitioned into a complete all blockchain all the time. Like. <laughs> that's all I've been doing is just like, not, not really any, not much like real work to speak of, um, just research and learning and like being completely immersed, like sometimes like 13, 15 hours a day in just yeah. only block, like reading white papers, buying NFTs, like the whole nine yards, like just absolutely fascinated um and just didn't do literally anything else yeah um and before that like you know before that those couple months i was talking about the month of october all i did was music like the only thing that i did i was i would literally be at like my co-working space yeah mixing songs yeah, like, yeah, yeah. literally I, I didn't do an ounce of anything else with any of my time for an entire month because i was just trying to put out this project yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it that's just like how that's just how it goes for me yeah. like that's just how I operate and it used to stress me out right it used to be like I want to be doing more of this like why am I why haven't I worked on music in three weeks or like why am I not working my actual job that's like I need to like make money yeah it would stress me out and you know it still does sometimes yeah. but it's definitely like I'm just embracing it more now yeah you know? I'll say also, yeah, do you see it as any, like, a bad thing? Like, part of me feels like that's just you being in your own groove. Like, exactly. Yeah. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's a bad thing when I perceive it as a bad thing or when I try to force myself into mm -hmm. doing other things. That That's when it gets, like, stressful. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, I think stressful is the right word. Even when it's music, right? Like, something I'm, I don't need for money. Like I just do because like, I want to do it. It's like, if I don't want to do it for a period of time, like, why would that stress me out? Why, why yeah. would I let that stress me out? That's like, so contradictory to like, yeah, anything like, I, um, I totally, you know? totally feel that, especially with the whole, first up on the whole flow of everything. Like it's kind of just letting go of even com the comparison thing, I know you're not a um, social media user and stuff. So there's also a open-endedness to that, but um, I think it's easy to get caught on like, what are other people doing? What am I supposed to be doing? At least that's where it catches mm -hmm. my, my mind energy at, at sometimes. Um, but then, yeah, on the music comment, it's more of, I feel that too, where sometimes I'm like nailing shit. I like get some good sounds created, get this stuff for like four tracks. I like, mm -hmm. all, all of a sudden I'm addicted to it. I just, go, go, go. It's like three days. I busted out so much shit. And I like finish it. I'm like, okay, I'm like in the music. now. go, I go to the next song and I'm like, fuck this. Like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. Like four hours. I'm sitting there. It's just dead gone. Like I can't dead like, gone. Do it. Like hang it up, hang it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm a fraud. I'm a fraud. Everything I've made, like, I'm not actually good. I just, I, I like to use samples and I, sound design stuff. I just get lucky. And I'm like, and I enter into this, like, self-diminishing yeah yeah belief and then again two weeks later same thing i go into like someone sent me a song actually this kind of happened over we were point christmas time and then someone sent me a song that was so on point with my kind of alley of, of things i love and i could just hear what it was missing like i could hear where the mix was off i could hear the like empty fills of stuff and like some sounds and i was like fucking send me this and two days smashed it out of the park like send it back she was like fuck yes i'm like yes and ended up having a new friend from that too it kind of whole story there um but hey. 
basically there's kind of these just waves of two days later, I've got a new fucking thing. I'm like most excited about and two weeks of just self doubt and pain. Yeah. <laughs> and also to your point, why am I stressed out about <laughs> lack of nailing it every time when that's first off the reality of any creative process. And then second, it's like, I'm just doing this because I love to do it. The second I'm putting this weird pressure of, I have to do it is like, it's weird, right? It's like, it, it, once you go into it, it's like, why do I do that to myself? Like, there's no, there's nobody that wants me to make music except for me. Like, no one cares, <laughs> like, yeah. if I'm making music or not, like, except for me, because I, like, I, it's almost like the difference between actually wanting to do something and like thinking you want to do something. Yeah. 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 You know? And like convincing yourself over such a long period of time that like you want to design your life around this thing. And like, you, it's just, it's, it's all stories and fake yeah. except for the, those moments where you're intrinsically like, I really just am drawn to music right now and like following that. Dude, um, today, literally today. So we're going to steamboat. Um, uh, my buddy's got the condo thing they were doing like our roommates are going another friend we're doing like a, a little whatever guys hang out thing they're all going to go skiing right and i'm on this self dilemma of, i actually don't even love skiing that much or snowboarding and i've had the, the injuries and at this point i'm kind of like over it <laughs> like i'm just like yeah i'm just like scared i'm gonna hurt myself and when i get up there all my friends just go leave and rip the fucking double back flip shit and i'm like now i'm just alone by myself on the mountain kind of like why am i doing this to myself it can be really fun but this morning i'm like do i go do i go and then i was like no wait i'm like wait a sec i'm gonna I, of course i'm going to steamboat i love to just hang out and be there i actually love the mountain mm -hmm. town feel and being going to grab the beers after but i'm like i'm fucking making tortilla soup on saturday I'm yeah. We're ripping this the boys are going to come back all cold and chilly from their snow thing and i'm gonna have a fresh fucking batch of homemade tortilla soup hey and, we go. and it's literally gonna be sick dude. Yeah, dude even talking about it now i'm like i don't want to go snowboarding it's not i don't want to i just uh, i want to go yeah we did this thing when uh we were in san miguel and we did this cooking um class and made the tortilla soup and then made it against once with tina and now i'm like I think I can just get it down by memory if I just do it sort of one more time or at least understand soups better. Mm -hmm. This is the time. This is I've got all day where I'm just going to go have some beers. Maybe I'll just do a bottle of wine to myself. And it sounds work, awesome. Yeah. Work on the beach for a sec or let the, yeah. let the stew kind of go. Oh, I was talking about in the stew. A hundred percent. Yep. <laughs> um, but yeah. It's a little bit of clarity. Like, why am I trying to pretend I want to go snowboarding right now. Yeah. I actually do we do it all the time yeah. to ourselves. It's, yeah. it's the weirdest thing. Like people, I think like a broader concept that ties in is like people just put themselves like the best thing that people are, are, are good at is uh, building their own prisons. Mm -hmm. Like you're free as a bird. You can do whatever you want. And then you buy a bunch of things and you get into a bunch of financial debt and you have all these responsibilities and expectations on yourself and you just ruin it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like every time. Yeah. You just get that nicer car to look a little flashier to then get the thing. Yeah. Match it. Or even in this context, like you, you know, you, you, you let yourself be driven by like these false sort of, you know, expectations that you put on yourself. Like I should want to go skiing. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck <laughs> that. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's the thing too, is it's, it's a weird, because there's a the balance to it also, which is I've actually had a lot of fun doing the skiing, snowboarding, like today and this weekend, I just don't want to. And it's, I shouldn't have to, like, who else am I even trying to convince? Like they're going to go have yeah. their the mountain. They're probably gonna be more annoyed if I'm sitting there trying to get a run in with them. And they're like, yeah, good for you. But uh, this is you're kind of ruining our time now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I'm just I love it. like, but it's also hard in a lot of other, like even, okay. Topic of uh, like the move into Thailand thing. Right. That's something mm -hmm. I like, that's not like a made up thing. Like I genuinely want right. to Thailand, not for a long period of time, but for by long, I, I basically a year just to mm -hmm. do 
music, live cheap, enjoy the food, go around the culture. It's got the mountains and the, the beaches and all the stuff. And But then there's this like pressure on, I guess it's like the social, I'm basically not in the short term. My fear of it is like the social isolation, but it's mm-hmm. kind of like the expectation of what is it that I'm actually seeking out here in Denver? Is it like going out to the bars? Is it the human conversation? Like if it's the human conversation, I can still have that in Thailand and catch up with friends, but it's also different. Um, I don't know, but I think about that as uh, what is it that sort of keeps us in our, Mm -hmm. in our spots, um, which also is not a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. I'm in Denver. I fucking love it here. When I came back over the past um, month, I was doing some travel stuff and I was with my parents. I got back to Denver and I was like, whew, okay, like we're back. I made it like, there's just like a weird yeah. warm comfort. Uh, it's a good thing. Um, but no, I think- it's like it, I, I feel like it's like routine that, that I feel that with is like getting back from like being very out of routine and like getting back to like your sort of- resources and like autonomy you know yeah. a lot of times when you're traveling you are like having to make compromises at every step of the way like yeah based yeah. on who you're with yeah and like when you get back to your sort of like space you can get back into like exact doing exactly what you want when you want yeah, yeah. whether it's you know like physical exercise and like getting work done and like having the studio and like that to me is really what i get back and i'm like oh thank god like traveling sweet but like this is awesome yeah um i think another like interesting lens to look at this through is uh benny our mutual friend just moved to our mutual city (laughs) let's talk about (laughs) noah binstock um he he wanted to move to thailand also right and i was talking about this the other day with him and he was like yeah, once I got to Mexico City and sort of realized, like, I was just putting Thailand as, like, the placeholder for what I really wanted was to be in new places, meeting new people, like, learning about new culture Mm -hmm. and, um, like, moving from place to place and seeing what sticks in terms of, like, stripping back your ego and, like, Mexico City's getting all like checking all those boxes for him and he now like is thinking about living there more long term Mm -hmm. and uh i think that's a good illustration of like nailing down like because for me it's australia um (laughs) what about what about this place that like we have sort of up on this pedestal yeah what about it is it you know because i think you went to thailand uh yeah, and, and so it's always like places we've been too, right? It, it's like it's almost chasing like experiences and feelings and like intangible things that probably you can find in many places. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, a lot of it's novelty, right? Um, and so, <laughs> what's that? But except the prices. <laughs> yeah, except for the prices. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. yeah, no, no, no. That's a good point. I mean, that is one of the appeals of 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 Thailand for yeah. sure. Mexico City seems pretty cheap too. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. There's a lot of, especially if it's just lifestyle too. If you learn how to shop appropriately and like yeah. find the right spot to live. and Yeah, I mean, Benny's been sending me pictures of of tacos. He's like, yeah, $1.50 for these three tacos and yeah. pays 400 bucks a month in rent. Like, Yeah, yeah not, not, not bad, especially if you can not get not bad. You got a good remote job and you're just, exploring around there there's so much like natural just beauty and social realms to like explore in that so yeah i think i'm moving to australia officially in at the, be- the beginning of next january whoa drop the yeah Here we go. <laughs> what's the how what? more info go um i yeah I, so it i think it's become like less just like my dream and more on and I's dream. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, like, I think if I, like if she died or something tragic happened, mm-hmm. uh, I don't think I would actually go to, I don't think I'd want to go to Australia anymore. Like it's really become like our dream. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but yeah, we've been, it, it just, uh, 
it, I don't know what it is. Like, I think just one more like round of like holidays and sort of like being with, you know, another year of like being with friends and family here and like really enjoying it. It just feels like the right amount of time to like, just nail a date to the wall and like start being able to actually like apply for visas and like mm. really actually start like digging into the yeah. logistics of, of actually going there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just feels like the right time. I actually had some, uh, some friends um, who did that. I don't know if it was Australia and New Zealand or what, but they stayed for a very extended period of time. Maybe I can uh, link you up with them. And yeah. What's the, do. So what's like the fine, like, are you basically, you, you think it's next, basically a year from now, Jan one kind of thing. Is that yeah, exactly. Are you nervous mm-hmm. about the whole COVID stuff? Like, I feel like I've been just hearing the, yeah of intensity and how they treat that 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 was another reason that it you know sort of kept being pushed off um it does feel like it's clearing up a little bit there um just from things i've read like they're a little bit like we're fed up with this shit like no more mask mandates like that's kind of the sentiment i've been seeing out of like the sort of politicians there um but i think at the end of the day like it's it's not in any like really extreme lockdowns anymore um i think everywhere has its i think if you were in the u.s you would think that the u.s was like not a good spot to be right now in terms of our covid stuff that's going on except for like texas and florida and stuff but (laughs) I, i think it's one of those things where like i just I'm done like listening to people be like, Oh, but it's probably like, there's all these like mandates and like this and that. It's like, well, that's happening here too. Like, I just want to go there, feel it out, see like what the actual deal is. Yeah. I want to be able to surf every day like that. That to me is just like a lifestyle that I need at this point. Like I just, I need to surf every day. Like that is like, it just, yeah. (laughs) Uh, But certain type of thing yeah I'm, I'm totally yeah agree. oh yeah but yep. well um awesome we're also getting to the last little like basically hour here um any other last last thoughts on anything <laughs> um no keep keep living don't uh don't let the uh self-expectations of what you should want to do, guide you. I feel like that's kind of the the takeaway from this.